Hi everyone, welcome to today's um, expo presentations at the Midwest Mountaineering Spring Expo. Um, starting at, in just a couple minutes here, we have Sevi Stenber presenting on mental training for climbers, the Rock Warriors way. And we have Sevi with us right now. Um, feel free to join the chat on the Outdoor Adventure Expo website and post your questions in there if you have any, and Sevi will be able to answer them uh, throughout this, his presentation. I'll pass it over to you, Sevi. Right on. Thank you, Madison. So hello, everyone. Um, shout out to Minnesota. Uh, most of you are likely joining from Minnesota, but the cool thing about um, the the digital outdoor expo is you might be joining from anywhere. So welcome wherever you are joining from. I'm super psyched to be here today to tell you um, about my journey towards becoming um, a Warrior's Way trainer. And also just to sort of geek out with you on mental training specifically for rock climbers. But the cool thing is, is um, the Warrior's Way principles apply to anyone, regardless of if you're a climber or not. So um, no matter who you are and what your interests are, you are welcome here and you belong here. So um, I'm sharing my socials and contact information on the front end. Um, rather than the last thing. And the reason I'm doing that is um, I want this to be uh, something that's useful for you. And so as you're going, ask questions um, and do that in the chat and I'll respond to them in live time or as quick to live time as we can. But then also if you want to like take notes and then um, send an email with your thoughts at the end. That works too. Um, but the bottom line is like ask questions, whether it's in the chat or via email or via direct messages on Instagram, because this is for you. Like that's the cool thing about the Midwest Mountaineering Outdoor Expo is it's an opportunity for people that are psyched on the outdoor world to come together and I mean, I'm here for y'all. Midwest Mountaineering is putting this on for the consumer. And I just think that's one of the really cool things. Um, let's see. Okay, great. So again, the socials um, give, uh, I, I'm here representing the Warriors Way. Um, I've worked closely with Arno Ilgner and Lore Saberin over the last couple of years towards becoming a trainer. And then um, I am on the Denver Mountain Guiding Team. And uh, yeah, I, I guide in the front range with Warriors Way Clinics. And I also do just personal guiding, um, you know, if you want to go rock climbing. So give us a shout on the socials, send me a direct message, um, let me know what questions you have. Um, Oh, wow. It's starting to rain here. I might need to pivot towards uh, under the canopy. Um, that's okay. I'll, I'll move in a minute if I need to. And then, of course, my email. Um, I'm actually going to walk under my canopy here. <laughs> so uh, yesterday I was streaming in a t-shirt and today um, I'm in like a winter jacket. So weather in the front range is inclement suffice it to say okay great so you, you know how to get a hold of me um just really briefly who am i um i am sevi elliott stember born and raised in northern minnesota um bemidji specifically and there's not a lot of rock up there so i didn't really start climbing um but my first love in the outdoor world was skiing i was uh you know Skiing as soon as I could walk, basically. Um, Cross-country ski raced all throughout um, my childhood and even into college and into my young adult life. And then I learned to climb at um, the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth, Minnesota, on the sea cliffs um, of Palisade Head, Shovel Point. Um, and man, uh, the Minnesota climbing community runs deep. I'm still very much connected to it um and yeah it's just a it's a special special community of people um 
Yeah, that's my mom in the upper left hand corner, Susan. My mom, Susan. Uh, my sisters, Bryn and Mariah. My dad um, and I on skis there in the middle. And um, be, yeah, my my back, my professional background was in public education. Um, and I, you know, right now I've transitioned um, into coaching climbers, but I coach soccer uh, players. I coached teachers. Um, so really like my whole, my whole professional um, life has involved coaching and mentorship in some capacity. So becoming a warrior's way trainer was just a really natural extension of what I've already done my whole life, which is to help people learn and mentor people. Um, yeah, again, shout out to Adon and Madison um, and the owners of Midwest Mountaineering. I think this event is just so very cool. Um, I've done it for years. Like this is probably like I first probably presented like 10 years ago um, at the Midwest Mountaineering Outdoor Expo. Um, I've missed a couple years here and there, but it's, it's just been an honor to um, work with such a community oriented company. Okay, um, there's a lot of words on here, but basically we're going to go over um, like what is the Rock Warriors way? Um, what was my journey or what has um, what has been my journey towards becoming a Warriors way trainer? Um, yeah, and then um, I'll share with you some opportunities for um, your own education in the climbing world, if that's of interest to you. Sweet. Um, I'm going to go grab, I promise I won't walk around this whole presentation. I'm just going to grab a couple of books over here. Um, so yeah, like many, many climbers have um, either read or they're familiar with The Rock Warrior's Way. Arno published his book, first in um, like the early 2000s. And that first book was The Rock Warrior's Way. And at that time and to this day, it is one of the foremost um, texts on mental training. And there's others out there, of course, for sure. Um, they're all great tools. But um yeah, I, I first read this in 2006. I was a park ranger living and working in Yosemite Valley. Um, and I was new to climbing, right? I'd climbed for maybe like two or three years. And I went from top roping in, you know, at like Ely Peak in Minnesota to climbing grade four, um, you know, big walls in a day. So it was like this very exponential curve that I was on. Um, and reading his book helped me understand a process for making decisions. And that's a lot of what the Rock Warriors way is all about, is a framework to break down falling, um, climbing, and, and things like that. And what I've found is that it's often sort of this mystical thing like, well, climbers fall sometimes and when it happens, it happens, but we just don't really talk about it. And it doesn't need to be that way, right? Like climbers are great about talking about, um, you know, their hangboarding routine or their four by fours in the gym on the bouldering wall. Um, and we really overemphasize, in my opinion, in American culture, like the physical body, but equally important um, is the mental landscape and like training our mind. Um, yeah, so that's another thing that really um, has just been like a compelling aspect of um, working with Arno and Lore, the person over here in the red orange hoodie um, is Lore, and Lore is the um, training, uh, the climbing trainer leader. So um, Lore's taken on like a, a big role with the climbing side of the business. Um, Arno's working on, I believe it would be his third book right now. So as um, 
you know, as the climbing community expands and there's more demand for, um, yeah, for our clinics and content, um, yeah, the, the lore has taken a bigger role in the business. So, um, yeah, and this, I guess, I guess I'm showing two of the same image. <laughs> Arno's other book is Espresso Lessons. And this is like um, really like, like just this past weekend, I was in Clear Creek Canyon um, guiding and conducting a falling and commitment clinic. And one of the participants said, well, you know, which book should I start with, right? Espresso Lessons or The Rock Warrior's Way. Um, either one. I, uh, I recommend reading the Rock Warriors Way first. This gives you like a comprehensive overview of the material. And then you can sprinkle in some of the drills and concepts in this. Uh, the Espresso Lessons is like primarily um, drills and really specific applications that you can use. So that's a little bit about what the Rock Warriors Way. It's mental training and so much more. So um, really, uh, really briefly here, I, uh, like I said, in 2006, I obtained a, uh, an internship to work as a park ranger intern in Yosemite Valley. And I mean, what an honor, right? Like I, uh, I kind of had this nagging suspicion that I needed to do something um, that like young adult or like young professionals do. I was like, man, I, I should, I should get an internship, but I don't really want to, where should I get one? And I was like, well, I wonder if there's an internship and I'm typing, I'm like, I wonder if there's an internship in Yosemite Valley. So I typed it in and a uh, uh, word document popped up and I applied and I got, um, I received the internship kind of like magically super, super special summer. So yeah, like I said, I was climbing these huge routes and it was really helpful to be exposed to Arno's book. Um, and I just devoured it. I, uh, it was a quick read for me. I was just like ready for, um, a process to apply to my climbing. Um, uh, I cook, I took a couple of like massive falls that summer, um, 40 or 50 foot screamers. And um, so even though I was reading the book and applying some of the principles, um, I still very much so had not like developed a clear understanding of yes and no falls. Um, a yes fall being a fall that I have experience with and a no fall being a fall that I don't have experience with. Um, and so since then, uh, you know, that was like a mildly traumatic event. I was fine. No broken bones or anything like that. But, um, you know, it took some time to recover from that and develop a healthier relationship with falling. And that's one of the cool things about the warrior's way is that Falling doesn't have to be something that we black out for and it just happens to us. It can be something that we're in relationship with and we experience and actually develop comfort with. Um, that may sound counterintuitive, but again, falling is something that we can develop comfort with um, through practice, right? It doesn't happen magically. You got to practice it. So fast forward like 13 years later, um, I'm in a men's group and part of our process is to set impossible goals or a goal that really stretches us towards be becoming a bigger version of ourselves. So I email Arno um, out of the blue. We didn't know one another, had never met. And I said, hey, I'm interested in becoming a trainer provided him some information about my climbing background. And that was about a year and 10 months ago. So coming up on two years here. Anyway, Arno and I, um, you know, developed a relationship over the interwebs and 
discussed um, how we might work together, uh, you know, with me becoming one of his trainers. And this is us um, in El Dorado Canyon State Park. We climbed on the wind tower. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm like really honored to be on the team of Warriors Way trainers. Um, I'm not quite done it yet. I'm still a trainer in training, but um, my exam is a week from today. <laughs> so super exciting. Um, yeah, so not only does, uh, you know, it is the Warriors Way a text, but it's also an opportunity to take a clinic, right? And that's a big part of what I'll be doing with the Warriors Way. We offer gym clinics that are generally four to five hours. And those are um, quick. They're, they're the quickest version of what we offer. And I, um, I do not have a, I currently don't have anything going with um, vertical endeavors or any of the gyms in Minnesota, but I am offering courses at Red Wing. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. Um, if you're interested, definitely hit me up on the socials again, Instagram or email. Um, I have a, I have a couple of private, um, you know, some interest in private stuff potentially. And then, um, I'll also have some dates, but the bottom line is, um, I can work around your schedule. So just hit me up. So anyway, we also offer outdoor clinics and those are a full day. Those are eight hours. And oftentimes people have taken falling or people have fallen in the gym, but there's sort of a barrier to get over with their relationship to outdoor falls. And so the outdoor clinics can be a really nice way of, um, leveling up, right, of gaining experience in an area where you previously have none. So those are, um, those are two of our options. And then lastly, we also have um, trad clinics. And, you know, that might be like sort of the third level. Um, you know, learning to fall on gear is, uh, is yet another layer of trust, is, is what I've found in my personal climbing and talking to climbers throughout the last 17 years of my climbing life. Um, and then just briefly, like I, uh, I consider myself an all arounder. I do a little bit of everything, um, or maybe a lot, a bit of everything. I love to sport climb. I've trad climbed for, you know, over 15 years. I alpine climb doing, you know, big routes on the diamond and in Rocky mountain national park. And, you know, I also boulder and that helps me on a rope for sure. So part of the process to becoming um, a trainer is developing, uh, you know, either my own guide service or developing a relationship with a, an existing guide service. And uh, yeah, like I said, shout out to Denver Mountain Guiding. Um, I first met Kevin Caps, and that's the guy in the yellow jacket in the bottom left there. Actually, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm moving my mouse across um, Broadway ledge. And that's, that's the ledge, um, about halfway up the diamond, you climb up the North chimneys here. And actually Dan and I repelled in from, uh, kind of like the old school approach on, um, the chasm view. So we repelled down and then walked over here. And I led the first pitch and immediately got off route. I was like, 80 feet up on what was supposed to be five, six terrain. And I was like climbing definite five, nine, possibly five, 10 terrain. And I shouted down at Dan Brazel. That's the, uh, the guy next to me on top of the diamond. I was like, man, I think I'm off route. So I down climbed and wasted like a half hour. And this was, you know, like kind of crushing to <laughs> be off route on the very first pitch, but it was worth it because um, Kevin and Laura sort of popped up right as I hit the ground or uh, down climbed to the ground and then started up the correct pitch. And um, so he and I stayed in touch over the years. Um, and he was the first guide service I thought to reaching out to when Arno let me know that I needed to find a guide service. So yeah, Kevin's a staple in the front range climbing community and um, yeah, offers, uh, you know, guiding. So if you have any guiding needs, hit us up. 
we'd be happy to help you. So yeah, anyway, Dan Brazel and I um, climbed the diamond that day. We did the casual route, which, you know, it's the most casual route on the diamond, but I wouldn't say it's casual per se. Um, special day for sure. So the first thing that I did was um, participate in the free mind training. The free mind training is um, yet another avenue that the Warrior's Way has for you to develop your, um, your mental training skill set. So there's group clinics. Um, there is personal one-on-one -on -one, um, training. And just briefly, what is it? It's awareness-based. So one of the primary tenets of the warrior's way is to develop awareness right now in your body um, because that's where life happens it happens now and in our own bodies um, and i think as american culture or maybe just human culture advances it's harder and harder to have awareness because we've got these things. Um, we've got, well, this thing that I'm presenting on, there's like an infinite amount of information available and sort of like demanding our attention. So anyway, awareness-based and the, the free mind training is about mental flexibility, not toughness. We don't, we don't um, advance in the mental landscape by like being tough. It's not about like, just get over it, toughen up, take the fall. It's not what it's about. Um, the material is eclectic. One of the cool things about um, Arno's approach is that it pulls on um, knowledge from different centuries, different teachings. So to be more concrete, you know, Eastern, um, Eastern religion, like uh, Buddhism and meditation practices um, on, you know, samurai teachings, and then, you know, other current, more current um, authors. Sweet. Um, so one of the things I, I did was uh, to choose a new goal. And that's one of the it's one of the really neat things is um, not only does the free mind training help you in just approaching challenges in your own life, like in interpersonal relationships or, um, you know, professionally or whatever. It also, of course, applies to climbing. So I chose, um, you know, a goal, a new goal, which is to climb uh, a new grade. I've climbed 13A for years <laughs> and I have not yet climbed 13B. So um I'm actually getting pretty close on a route in Clear Creek, which is 13B. So, you know, it really, the free mind trainings helps push you um, with support. It's all about both, like showing self-love and self-compassion, um, but also setting inspiring goals. Teaches body awareness. Um so like uh, there's some different body awareness practices using Tai Chi. Um, and this helps when we're on the ground, not rock climbing. Like I'm able to identify feelings in my body better. Um, am I happy, sad, angry, triggered, um, right? And I can tell those things based on my heart rate or based on um, if I'm like unreasonably angry about something. But then it also applies to climbing, right? When we're doing challenging moves, we want body awareness because we're using our body to climb on really small holds. So it's important both on and off the rock. One of the other things is... Um, one of the other concepts the free mind training goes over is good and bad language. Um, if we were in person, I'd say raise your hands, but uh, you can you can drop it in the chat. Who who uses the words good and bad? 
to describe things. Think of the last time you described something as good or bad. Um, happens all the time. Check it out. Like try to draw awareness to when you use good and bad. The words good and bad. Um, like some people might say, oh man, it's a really, the weather's pretty bad today. Well, what does that mean? Uh, like a way of describing that more accurately would be, oh, the, the weather is um, overcast and kind of cool and breezy. That paints a lot more clear picture of the weather. And the reason um, the free mind training goes over this is um, we don't want to reduce life to polarities, good and bad, because it takes away a lot of the richness of our experience. Um, so for example, in the climbing world, you could say like this foothold, is it good or bad? Some people, oh, it looks like a bad foothold. Well, a better way of describing it would be, um, there's a small dimple out left and you need to make certain that you put your big toe on the left side of it because that's the biggest part of it. So you see the difference saying something's bad, not very helpful. Describing something specifically with your awareness, more helpful. We can identify what something is objectively rather than ascribing our subjective beliefs to it. Another drill in the free mind training is the one, two, three drill. Um, so let's say you're projecting something. Um, it's going poorly. The one, two, three drill would be accept the situation. I keep falling at the last move. So observe what's happening, I'm not trying to change it. It's so not making excuses. Oh, it's too hot. I'm too pumped. My Blair sucks. They short roped me. It's just like accept. Accept the situation for what it is. Be defenseless. This two, step two. So offer compassion to yourself. Offer compassion to your Blair. Right? It doesn't have my experience. It doesn't help for me to be angry at myself, to beat myself up. It still happens. I still do it, but it doesn't help. Same thing with my Blair. Like they're they're trying to do their best. They didn't mean to short rope me. And then three, tough love, a small step towards the unmet need. So um, a small step would be pulling up to the last bolt where I fell and taking three breaths and then looking around. Um, what footholds was I using? What other options are there? This just happened to me at a route in Red Rock Canyon. Um, I found a heel hook after falling on the same move for six or seven tries right it's kind of devastating to climb to the top of a route and keep falling but um by applying the one two three drill i was able to discover a new sequence and then the next time i did it i hiked the route it felt easy um let's see we'll circle back to breathing eyes body um that's more in our falling and commitment course um, which is the outdoor course or the indoor gym clinic. So yeah, like again, the free mind training is digital. It's virtual. There are group options. There are one-on-one -on -one options. Um, currently, Laura and Arno are the people running the free mind training. And it's a great way to up-level your, um, your mental game and have uh, weekly ongoing support, similar to like, a coaching relationship or a mentorship relationship. Okay, cool. So I took the free mind training. Um, I got certified as an American mountain guide instructor um, through the AMGA, American Mountain Guides Association. So I'm an, uh, a single pitch instructor. It's a three day course and a two day exam. Um, you know, I'd climbed for like 17 years before taking the course and I learned a ton. I learned a ton. Um, 
you know, it's easy to think like, oh, I've climbed so long. I don't have that much to learn. But uh, like I said, um, really like humbling to, you know, just see how much more I had to learn. So it was it was great. It was really cool to learn some self-rescue techniques, um, some more advanced rope craft. And then I'm also certified as a wilderness um, wilderness. I've got my woofa wilderness first aid. So. Yeah, those are, you know, those are, that's just the industry standard. Any guide needs those two certifications. Um, so then, you know, I, I took, so I took all of these different, um, you know, courses and became certified in WUFA and AMGA guide. And I, um, you know, did a whole um, three months of the free mind training with Arno and Lore Saberin. And then, um, you know, I applied that to my own climbing. Uh, this is a route in the Flatirons called Ouroboros. Um, I, I fell, it, so the route's like 42 meters, so it's massive. And I fell, um, on this particular route in the like 41st meter. So I was above the last bolt and, um, I fell, right? And that was really, that was a bummer. That felt um, frustrating to me. But what I realized on this route is that um, I needed to increase my body awareness and just like really experience the route more. And specifically at the upper crux, what I was doing is getting anxious and then... Um, not engaging the holds with my eyes and really like being present in my body. I was just climbing quickly and anxiously and sort of my mind was elsewhere, which wasn't helpful. And so my next like four attempts on the route, I fell actually lower. So I was kind of making like negative progress, it felt like. Um, but then the day that I sent the route, I got to the crux um, and I, in like one tenth of a second, I had the realization that I wanted to become anxious and let my mind drift elsewhere. I redirected my attention and was like, no, enjoy this. Feel the holds in your hand, see the holds you're grabbing. And I sent the root. It felt easy, honestly. Um, and that's the cool thing is like we can enjoy our rock climbing and have more fun through mental training. This is another route in the Western slope. It's called Savage and Beautiful Country. Um, it's 12D and on Sunday, so it was a Saturday, Sunday trip last summer. Sunday at like 4 p.m. It was my last attempt. All my friends were ready to go. It's like, all right, man, let's, let's head back. We got to get going. Um, and I was like really, really down on myself. Um, so I went into the woods. I did like a five-minute silent meditation. And um, I practiced the one, two, three drill. Acceptance, um, defenselessness and a small step. And that small step was offering myself self-love. I was like, hey man, whatever happens is okay. I love you no matter what. This route's not that big of a deal because it's not, right? Like it's just rock climbing, it's just for fun. I don't need to like beat myself up um, over it. But like, this is common. This is common in the climbing world. We have um, our own stories that we've developed throughout our life and some of them are pretty terrible stories about not being enough, um, not being good enough, not, you know, et cetera. This is a route. It's a 12, um, I think it's like 12A or 12B. It's up at Independence Pass. And um, this was an on-site attempt. I did, I did on-site the route. Um, 
which is that's not the point. The point is um, the you know the the warrior's way concepts, the free mind training, the body awareness, all of it helped me experience the process, right? So one of the things in our falling and commitment courses, which are our outdoor courses, um, let's see, uh, it's not there. Um, but one of the one of the important things is when you rest, rest, and when you climb, climb. And that's super important on site climbing because um, you got to be decisive. Like this route's steep and it's pumpy. And I need to execute moves between rests. If I'm climbing with half of my commitment, I'm going to get pumped and I'm going to not be able to finish the route. So that's what I did on this route. And I would definitely say that's one of the things that allowed me to be successful on it. Same thing on this route. This is a super awesome route in Lander, Wyoming called Enter the Dragon. It's 12C. Um, you know, this, I hung draws in this route, same thing. It was like end of a trip late in the day. I had one more go both from a time perspective and like fitness perspective. Um, and I had to fully commit to the moves. The crux is, um, actually like right where I am and without full commitment. Um, if I was to like just partially commit and be like, anxious about the fall, for example, be distracted on like, oh, what if I fall? There's no way I would have done the route, but I was able to um, to red point the route second try. And, uh, and again, being fully committed to climbing is what allowed me to do that. Sweet. Um, we'll end with my current reality. My current reality is I am in my final um stretches of my teaching tour um this evening at uber Grippen, um in west uh, excuse me east denver kind of like the stapleton area i'll be teaching um a falling and commitment course it's a four hour four and a half hour course at an indoor gym um typically the capacity is up to six people so you get really um personally tailored small group instruction and uh that's the same ratio for our outdoor courses and actually our outdoor courses normally have a smaller ratio but up to six people um and basically we'll just dig in we do a brief intro um we transition directly into a falling block um you take uh like i mean probably after all is said and done like up to 15 to 25 falls so it's a lot it's a lot of falls we start incrementally with um top rope falls and then we transition to more realistic lead falls um we debrief then we go into a commitment block and that's all about learning to move over rock or plastic if you're indoors with full commitment so we cycle between rests and um, climbing. Climbing is a cyclical process. We need to cycle in a timely manner between rests to let our body and mind um, you know, be ready. And then, you know, we can't rest forever and then we need to climb with commitment, right? Um, we make, uh, we make decisions at resting points. And then when we climb, we're able to climb better because we aren't afraid of falling. We've already made our risk assessment. And then when we fall, we can fall well because guess what? We've practiced falling. Um, that's what it's all about. You don't get better at falling magically. You get better at falling by practicing falling. It's that simple. Just like uh, Michael Jordan practiced free throws, climbers practice falling. Um, that are, you know, climbers that are skilled at falling practice falling. I should have brought this slide up because I just explained all of this. Um, but this gives you a visual of what a falling and commitment course is.
TR falls and realistic lead falls in the falling block. Um, commitment block, which is three separate drills. We go over resting and stopping. And then um, we do a discussion on risk, uh, risk assessment. Um, thanks for the chat or the question in the chat and just keep doing that. So if others of y'all have questions, um, reach out. I'll just read this aloud for everyone. What level of proficiency, if any, in rock climbing does someone need to have for the falling and commitment course? Great question. So we ask that you're able to climb 5'8 um, and that you're able to, uh, or, or rather that you're climbing consistently. So it's not, there's not even like a minimum amount of time that you need to have climbed. Um, but again, proficient climbing 5'8 terrain and uh, you're climbing consistently. Thank you for that question. And, and just like a side note, there's no reason that you have to take a gym clinic first. The courses aren't like sequential and there's not, there's not course prerequisites. You could, um, you could jump to an outdoor clinic. Um, there's no wrong answer there. It's just kind of per personal preference. Um, in fact, like last week, um, last weekend, so like two days ago, um, one of my clients had never fallen outdoors. <laughs> it brought me like so much joy to see her take her first fall outdoors. And then, you know, her fifth, sixth, tenth, twentieth fall outdoors. She, you know, we do a lot of falling practice. And uh, I don't know, it's just like a special thing. First fall outdoors. Oh, last thing. Back down to number six. The application is like putting all of the drills together in an application climb at or near your limit. So like, let's say your on-site ability is 11C. We would find, I would find a route for you um, to apply the concept. So we would try to find an 11C or, you know, something close to that. So... Yeah, I, um, my, my teaching tour started in Joshua Tree National Park. Um, I was there like, I don't know, late, mid to late April. Um, this was a trad clinic. And so people are falling on gear. Super cool. Um, people are sometimes curious, like, what does that setup look like? Um, you're definitely falling on gear. Um, basically we build an, uh, we place like, let's say a number one Camelot and then a three piece anchor below. So you've got the one that you're falling on. The anchor is a backup and then we also, so, and so you're falling on your lead line. And then we also have a top rope as a, um, you know, catastrophe backup. So it's, uh, it's both very realistic because you're actually falling on gear and also, um, you know, minimizing risk in every way that we can, because we have like multiple, um, multiple layers of backups. Um, this woman, it was super inspiring to me. She's part of the old school generation of climbers that didn't fall on gear. The ethic, um, the ethic over the years, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, was just like, don't fall. Why? Because climbing ropes and technology hadn't evolved that much. It's largely a survival mechanism. Like, don't fall. It's not that safe. Um, climbing gear and our own um, climbing communities, like knowledge and intelligence of how to fall, minimize risk, etc. cetera. Um, it's just evolved a lot. And so anyway, this particular client was... Um, overcoming 40 years of conditioning to not fall and learning to fall, which was just like super inspiring to me. All right. So hopefully this, uh, this video streams well. Okay. 
Come on. Let's see. I think we already saw that one. All right, here's a different one. So we pre um, what this climber is doing is an impact drill. And this is actually what we start with in our falling and commitment course. You push off the wall and practice impacting the wall with bent limbs. Um, and this is, you know, proper falling technique. You don't grab the rope because that doesn't help. You keep your arms out in front of you so that you can push off the wall um, if you get a hard catch. We want to be prepared to respond to what happens. Mm, one more. Awesome. Cool. How can you get involved? Um, the best way is to, um, you know, head to the warriorsway.com. Uh, I believe Madison was going to drop that in the thread. Maybe they already did. Um, so yeah, check out warriorsway.com. You can find um, clinics in your area. Um, you can also just email me or message me on Instagram um, and I can help you find one um in your area and so that's those are a couple avenues um we also have a mental training forum on the warrior's way website um so check that out you could take a free mind training there's all sorts of different ways you can get involved so check out some of those opportunities um if you're interested so yeah, I've already talked about this mostly, online red pointing and online falling, I didn't mention, but there's some online courses as well. Um, we've already talked about this, falling in commitment, gym, sport, trad, and bouldering. Even Chris Sharma has uh, engaged with the Warrior's Way. So I am going to offer these courses at Red Wing, Minnesota. I don't have a date picked out for summer slash early fall, late summer slash early fall, um, which may play to your advantage because you can influence my decision. <laughs> um, just hit me up and let me know what dates work best. Um, you know, but if you haven't read some of these books, check them out. Um, you can get like a you know, little discount if you buy both of them. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna scroll back all the way to my socials. Sorry for the uh, there we go. Um, yeah, 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 great. So here is my email. Um, definitely hit me up, uh, or hit up Lauren Arno at, um, or the, the Warriors way people. Um, I'm going to stick around here for a little bit if you have other questions. Um, but without, without, uh, without further ado, I'll hold it, hand it back over to Madison. Thanks, Evie. Um, that was an awesome presentation. I definitely learned a uh, ton just like in thinking about my own climbing as well. So thanks, thanks. for all of that information. Yeah, my um, pleasure. Yeah, we can definitely stick around here for a little bit and see if anyone else has questions that come up in the chat. And otherwise, this is recorded and it will be posted on the Midwest Mountaineering YouTube page. And that's a great place to reference some of the other information that Sevi had in his presentation. If you're like, oh, I want to go back and think about which clinic is going to work best for me. Um, you can totally rewatch and learn. And I posted Sevi's email and the general information email that are up on the screen as well in the chat also. Yeah, let's see if anyone else has any other questions. Awesome. How long have you been climbing for again, Sebi? Yeah, um, 
like 17 years. Wow. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I know. I know. There's all of these signs of aging around me. I don't feel like I'm older, but uh, reality's showing me otherwise. But yeah, I've been climbing a long time, you know, since my early 20s. So nice. it's just become like a, a way of life almost. Um, mm -hmm. Just something my soul really resonates with. Totally. How about you? How long you climbed for? Um, I had started climbing just uh, in college, so mm -hmm. probably six years ago. And nice. it's definitely, I have actually found it not hard in the Twin Cities, but not as um, easy to jump into as living in other parts of the country in the Northeast and in the Southeast. It feels mm -hmm. there's just a larger culture around it. Yep. And so it's definitely not something that I have pushed to do as much here, but I think listening mm -hmm. to this has made me want to also. <laughs> nice. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Minnesota's, um, Minnesota's hardcore in like so many ways, but like the climbing community specifically, um, our season is so short. Totally. <laughs> that like you really got to get while the getting's good and there's not an abundance of places to climb. So you got to go where there's climbing and yeah, it's just kind of funny like that. Yeah, absolutely. And the climbing that does exist in a lot of those places is tough climbing, like up on the North Shore. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's serious up there. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions coming through the chat, but definitely if you have questions, reaching out to Sevi or through Midwest Mountaineering, we can definitely get you in contact with him also. And yeah, this will be up on the YouTube page by the end of the day today, likely. Thanks, y'all. Thank you again, Sevi.